Hello folks and welcome back to this week's Workshop Wednesday. I'm Doug and this is Vintage Automobilia. So what have we got going on in the workshop today? Well, we have a Bowser in pieces. We have some Bowser electric pump panels and a new arrival Betmeter M50 project pump. We still have the MGB in the workshop as well. And this absolute whopper of an enamel sign. A huge five foot by three foot three inches across enamel sign for Ascot hot water heaters. Something a little bit different, nice and pictorial. That would fill a big space on any wall. So a few different things going on this week. The Bowser Red Sentry pump I've been stripping down, that's a restoration for a client. The Bowser Electric pump panels, now they're awaiting cleaning down and painting as well. I might take those to the sandblaster, I might strip them here. They're not bad condition actually, they don't need an awful lot of work. There's a few dents and warps to address, we can do that. The Betmeter M50 is waiting for a customer to come along. That is the same model of pump as the little shell one that we've been doing recently. That will most likely end up exactly the same in red and yellow shell livery. It was originally a shell pump. Um, you can see the later white and yellow and red stripes livery that's there at the moment. Um, probably last used on a garage in around the 70s or 80s. Another item going to the blasters today is the barrel and base for the big Vickers shell pump restoration. So we need to lie this down, lift the barrel out from the base and get it in the van. So here is the barrel of the pump, the main body just lying down now, now on the floor. You can see all that lovely original red paint and the original green, which is the wartime over paint to just tone it down a bit was a friend. Now you can see here how thin it is. There's some pinholes in the metal there and some pitting. The edge is a little bit wasted. So I've just rolled the barrel over here and you can see how rusty and wasted away the metal is. This doesn't look like it's ever had any paint on it at all from the factory. Comparing it to the top, this is where it sits inside the base. And over this side of the workshop, we've got the door part of that. Obviously it's two sections and the door slides around the body of the pump. So this is the door here. And if you remember from an earlier video, we found what we thought was the date inside the door here. Um, a little bit more investigation and cleaning has revealed two more sets of dates. Um, one is a little bit illegible. One is clearly uh, quite a few months earlier in 1929. We now starting to wonder if these are actually service or calibration dates. Um, Any time an engineer has been and repaired or painted it or calibrated the pump in its early days, they've written the date in that it was done inside the door. So we're going to be saving this for sure. This is someone's handwriting in paint with a paintbrush 90 odd years ago. Just a real amazing piece of social history there. The other thing with this door is we've had to remove the catch because as you'll see here, there's a bit of a bend. At some point the key has probably been lost and it's been locked shut and they've had to prise the door open. The most likely is that they've put a crowbar or bar of some sort in above the lock and prised the door outwards. But before we go hammering away at this to straighten it out, we need to know which way it goes. Is the bottom bent or the top part bent? Now this is really crude, but I have here a big long piece of wooden batten and we're just going to place this along the edge. So if we first put it against the top here like that, so that's fairly straight. We can see there's a little bit of straightening to do just there. But if we move it down, we can see the line and the angle coming out and out and out. So that's not right. So if we put it on the bottom, Again, we can see there's a couple of places we need to just uh, straighten out. But if we then move that up, there we go. By the time it gets up to the top, round where the bearings run, that's basically lining back up and we can really see that kink in the metal there where it's been prized out. So we know that that section has to be 
um, beaten back carefully to meet that line. Also we've got a slight bend here on this beading that runs along the edge. This is kinked out so we're going to just heat that up and bend that back into place as well. Just trying to get this lined up and make sure it's definitely in line with where it is above that bend. So now it's time to tackle the more difficult bend up here. I've moved the anvil down onto the floor here um, on a couple of blocks. That just allows us to move this door around a little bit easier and get some of these dents beaten out. That's that bend there. Okay, I think that's looking pretty good now. The only way we're really going to tell is with our bit of wood again. So we need to try and protect this writing that's inside the door here when we get this sandblasted. We could clean this up by hand and save the risk of sending it to the blaster, but to be honest, in along this beading and the top um, castings here where all the bearings run and everything the best thing is going to be to get this blasted to really clean it up so we're going to mask off a large section here on the door to make sure that this paintwork is well protected now for that I have a piece of plastic this is an old um, five litre bottle or sort of can um, I think it was one of the brake fluid cans and I've cut a section out of it here because this piece of plastic will withstand the blasting process fairly well. Now what I'll do is I'll make sure that that's much much larger there with my tin snips than the area we actually want to save because we can tidy the edges up by hand later sanding it. So I've just trimmed some edges off, that fits nicely over there. I'll give this a really good clean up to degrease it with the uh, brake cleaner to make sure that tape sticks to it. What we're going to do is we're going to get some duct tape and we're going to tape that to the barrel there over that just around the edges and go over it as well for extra protection. The handle on the other side here as well we're also going to tape that up. Now that's brass, uh, brass or bronze, um, but it's riveted to the door. Now I don't want to disturb those rivets because, again, they're very close to this paint we want to save. In fact, I've made a little lined area on there uh, marking out the border that I want and they actually fall right on the line of where I want to put the, the border. Um, so it's several issues really. I don't want to disturb the rivets. Um, I want to keep the really original look of it being riveted on. I don't want to have to mess around trying to re-rivet it later. We can do the catch, that's not a problem, but this handle is slightly different. Um, they're very flat and flush on both sides. Really, if we don't have to disturb it, why? I'm going to put some masking tape over this, because that won't stick um, as aggressively as the duct tape will. <laughs> So that's it from me here this week. Not a very long video I'm afraid. We've got a few other bits and pieces going on that I'll try and film throughout the rest of this week and bring you in next week's Workshop Wednesday video. We've dropped off everything at the Sandblaster today. Um, unfortunately I forgot to take the camera but we will capture that next week. We've had a new arrival little CH1 petrol pump which you will see on our social media. Um, go and check out our Facebook page and our Instagram and eBay as well, Vintage Automobilia, and you'll see that one. 
So thanks for watching, we'll catch up with you next week when we will have more on the Vickers petrol pump restoration as well as more goings on in and around the workshop. Stay safe everyone, thanks for watching, bye for now. Thank <laughs> you.